Major Muhammad Ali Shah, uh, what is your take on it? Uh, how do you want to respond to this? What needs to be done to ensure uh, the safety and peace in the valley? Because uh, as we are tracking since morning, uh, encounters are all still breaking out. Uh, there are attacks still happening. Targeted killings are still happening. So what needs to be done to ensure safe return of Kashmiri pundits in the valley? You know, it, is, it was very unfortunate in the early 90s when the exodus of the Kashmiri Pandits took place and it was really, my heart goes out to the Kashmiri Pandits and we all saw, many of us saw this film, The Kashmir Files, where the Kashmiri Pandits today, they do not need revenge, they need rehabilitation. They need uh, to be back to their own homes. They need to be back to their, where they belong to actually. It was very, very unfortunate that when they were displaced from there. Now, how do we do that? It's easier said than done. Because you are seeing violence happening, people are trying to create trouble, you know, a blast happening. Just 12 kilometers short of the venue, there was, it could have been a mid blast, it could have been a, a, a lightning strike or whatever. That is yet to be investigated, the police is investigating on that. But yet, three terrorist strikes in one single day before the Prime Minister's visit. So yes, people are trying to create disturbance. Now, how do we actually get them to settle back to their own homes? One was application of Article 370 in August 2019. Yes, it's easier said than done. We, uh, people outside Jammu Kashmir, like someone like me or someone who does from the JNK, can go there now, buy land and purchase property and get government jobs. But will the locals over there actually permit it? Will they get into selective killing or will they actually really be welcoming towards a person who is not from Jammu Kashmir? Now, it is human nature, of person, the resistance would be there. But then that is not justified at all. Yes, how we do it is, I, my personal, that's my personal take, ex-servicemen who are not in the serving in the military anymore, who are not from Jammu Kashmir first, initially they go in there, they settle in there, they buy land, they start their small business. It starts from there. And slowly and gradually it spreads. And that is how we have to actually dilute the militancy, the problem, the, the trouble creators in Jammu Kashmir. The fringe elements, they have to be diluted. And let me tell you one more thing, that you know, by killing one Osama bin Laden does not mean that you have ended the entire militancy. The ideology has to be finished. It has to be nipped in the bud. It has to be killed then and there. The thinking, the brainwashing, the kind of radicalization that goes around, the kind of, because of unemployment, because of poverty, they pick up our youth and they take advantage. Pakistan takes advantage. Just now we killed two terrorists of the Jaish e Mohammed. Uh, and two days from foreign affairs had come across from Pakistan uh, through an underground tunnel. Now that, how do we stop that? By killing these two terrorists. Well, that's one way. Yes, you keep killing, you keep killing. But now, when we think of it strategically, we have to nip the ideology. And how do we nip the ideology? Through education, through creating opportunities. Now, Home Minister rightly said that, you know, we, are, we would be having IITs and IIMs in the state of Jammu Kashmir. That is the way. I mean, that when people see the IIT and IIMs right at the doorstep, they will automatically feel motivated to go there and study. They will be motivated to crack the IIT, the uh, the uh, the JE. They will be motivated to crack the UPSC. They will be motivated to go ahead and study and drop the weapons. It's like the pen is mightier than the sword. It's like a picture where a man is dropping the AK-47 because he has a book. When you get or something which is more powerful, you drop the less powerful. It's like that. So now how do we actually get them to do it? People have to take a stand. You have to be brave. You have to go there and settle down. And let's see, Korn kya karta hai? Korn aapki dharti hai? This, when we talk about Kashmiris, it's not just Kashmiri Muslims alone. It's the Dogras, it's the Kashmiri Pandits, it's the Kashmiri Hindus, it's everyone who belongs to the state of Jammu and Kashmir. Uh, I come from UP. So when they, if, uh, I am from UP. Simple as that. So a person is from Bihar, a person from Maharashtra, a person is from Tamil Nadu. Similarly, you have to take pride that you belong to the state of Jammu and Kashmir and people over there, the locals, have to be educated, they have to be welcoming towards people who are coming there to settle down their car. All right, Major Muhammad Ali Shah, uh, as far as uh, Jammu and Kashmir is concerned, we are talking about modern projects, modern technology that's coming to light, but the question ultimately comes down to security. How do we ensure that, you know, terrorism is wiped out from the state? Because Every single thing uh, comes down to security. Uh, so what should be the way forward? What should be the long-term strategy as far as wiping out terrorism is concerned, as far as sending out a strong message to countries like Pakistan is concerned? I'll bring a very good question by you. And this is something we have been struggling for a very, very long time. And if we could eradicate terrorism in the states of Punjab, 
in the state of Assam, in the states of Nagaland, they have seen fire. In Mizoram, it's complete peace. In Manipur, it's coming normalcy, it's crawling towards peace. So Manipur is very bad. Manipur is actually, I would rate it worse than Jammu Kashmir at the time, the service that I have spent over there. Now, how do we come towards peace? I think, see, you cannot uh, hold a person by a, uh, by a barrel of a gun and say, come on, I want peace. It's by winning hearts and minds. So, you know, uh, Priyanka, when I was posted in Jammu Kashmir, when I was in uh, Manipur, Nagaland, fighting insurgency, when the locals would see me in uniform, and with my AK-47 and my grenades and my arms and ammunition around me and my bulletproof vest and the black patka, instead of feeling intimidated by me, they would feel that the army is there to protect us. We are there for them. So we were actually soldiers for peace. We were there to maintain peace. We were there to ensure that the militants, the terrorists, do not harass or trouble the local villages over there, which keeps happening on a very regular interval. We have the VDC, the Village Defense Committee, where every person in the village is trained with a weapon. Though the weapons are for self-defense, they're not very lethal weapons. They are basically for self-defense. Now, one thing is to finish the ideology completely. By finishing one lashkar e Toiba commander or the jesh Mohammed commander, the military militancy will not end. You cut one head, ten heads will be born thereafter, unfortunately. So what one needs to do is, to control the ideology which actually roots from Pakistan. It is Pakistanis who play a proxy war on us because they do not have the guts to face us. They do not have the guts to face the Indian army. So they try catching hold of the youth, radicalizing them, train them and try sending them across on their behalf. Who will fight? Our, so in a way, our own people will fight against our own people. That is like really bad. Well, if we are fighting against a foreign country or against a different nation, it makes some sense. But when we are bleeding our own people, it really, it is not very, it's not a good sign at all. Now, how do we do that? Because Pakistan is not going to listen. They will not curb their ways. They will conduct, they are incorrigible. That's the only weapon they have. So one is, we have given them, we have done a surgical strike on them. We have done an air strike on them. We have gone inside their house. And that's not the first time or the last time that a surgical strike or an airstrike happens. Let me tell this to you as well. They have been, the transborder raids are very common. They happened during my time as well when I was serving over there. So now, by actually educating them, by bringing their hearts and minds, our ops and Bhavna is doing a very good job. They say traveling is the best education. So we take them around the country, we show them places, we gave, we let them instill the pride into them of being Indians, of being one, of belonging to one motherland. Now we are just one. So there is no question about, you know, they are the stone pelters, especially in Kashmir, whose stone pelter pelt on my colleagues. These are all bahare ke tattu. They are all paid labor. They are daily wage earners who come and do that. They, in, in fact, exemplary lessons have been taught to them. But yet, it is Pakistan who continuously, continuously creates that divide in our country by getting where Kashmiri youth is out. Now today, luckily, the Kashmiri youth have begun to realize that they are very much, and they are very much, they support us. They no longer, earlier, when people were, when Pakistan was successful in brainwashing our youth at a different time. So now they have graduated on to narco warfare, the Pakistanis, they have gone to speak on behalf of India. Who the hell are they? They are nobody. Imran Khan goes to UN and talks about the application of Article 370 or whatever happened, happened in India. It is our personal matter and we are enough to handle that. So now the, the bottom line comes to the ideology. Now how is the ideology to, to be collected? So I wrote an open letter to Jaish e Mohammed, the terrorist outfit, when the Pulama attacks took place. And that went, uh, letter, that letter went viral. Sumit has read that. In fact, you probably would have read that. Uh, Rishabh and many of a lot of people have, from the channel have read that letter. Now in that letter we educate, let's educate those people when somebody from the community, like I have read the Holy Quran, and when I come forward and I tell them, listen, what you will, I know the meaning of jihad, the technical meaning of jihad. It does not mean terrorism. Nowhere, no religion will actually teach you or tell you to go ahead and kill innocents. No religion will actually tell you to go ahead and take your life. No religion will teach you violence. Every religion talks about humanity, peace, charity, com being compassionate, being loving. Now these are misguided missiles 
who have been brainwashed and who have been taught they they have been shown dreams of paradise after they die and this will happen that will happen and they get brainwashed by that and that is where islamophobia comes into play today when a person is actually scared of a person or looks at a person with suspicion with a big beard or a cap it is organizations like lashkar e toiba jaish e mohammed taliban isis the fringe elements the militant outfits which are actually responsible today when a university like the aligarh muslim university or jamia millia islamia they get a bad name for no reason many times it is exactly it is blown out of proportion priyanka and that stems from the bad ill ill meaning people from the community from the muslim community who actually play upon that and they are the true enemies of islam let me tell you that nobody else the kind of damage that lashkar e toiba jaish e mohammed taliban isis have done on muslims alone is unimaginable so right thinking muslim gets sideline and his he has to suffer he has to bear the brunt of the ill actions of these fringe elements of these terrorist organizations now how do we curb it well we've been trying for many many long time but poverty unemployment lack of education and radicalization that radicalization has to be stopped they have to be told they have to be made to understand no it can, it has to come from within if a person wants to pick up arms you have to understand why is he picking up arms yes by exemplary lesson has to be taught they don't they don't doubt about it like for example trijan like uh, bran wani was in, in, in it was trijan and mr goravaria my senior from the army right he so he said it was trijan and he needed to be shot at that time very correct also if we analyze the situation if these people are actually convinced i can tell you preka do this you will probably listen because of uh, a friend telling you right but if you are convinced about actually doing something from your heart that's when and now when we actually move in when we have kashmiri pandits going back and settling down there and then then they coexist together i think it would be a very very good idea and when people do selective killings selective targets when they make the fringe elements the locals over there have to call out and come in support of everyone over there of the kashmiri pandits as well they have to say that listen this thing would not be accepted anybody found suspicious in jammu kashmir anybody should be reported straight away and they should be a thorough inquiry and if found guilty exemplary punishment should be given so that people install the the fear of god into everyone and it has to come from within unless it comes from within there is no solution to it priyanka Absolutely, solution has to come to this uh, problem. Uh, I agree with the uh, Major Muhammad that education and development are going to be the key to. We will have to focus on education to ensure that impressionable minds are not swayed uh, 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 by hardcore, hardline fundamental education. Uh, Thank all my guests to j for joining us on the broadcast for this big story.